great, thank you. Let me see if you can hear me. Well, it's all fine. Louder? Yes, I'll try. Let me try. Um, so hello everybody, my name is Laura Reda. I work as the communications director for, for data side. And as Kerry was saying, this, this session is all about data, and data is what we do at data side. Given our name, that was already expected. So what's the problem here? Um, you already know that data and data sets are the foundation of research. But data has evolved a lot in the last few years. So there's a huge difference between what we considered data before, and I find a nice example in the Marie Curie notebooks where she was taking notes, and that is what we considered research data before, and what research data is right now. And those terabytes of, of raw data generated at CERN by the ATLAS or the CMS experiments are what we consider data now. So it's not anymore about small data sets or pictures or little pieces of information. Data is a huge thing right now, huge in size and huge is in, in importance. So we definitely need reliable and unambiguous access to data. Um, so it's not only a matter of accessing this information, but it's a matter of supporting the community, as we have been doing with research publications all along. Um, researchers work in big collaborations right now. They generate, use, reuse, and modify data a lot. And all the research publication process relies on reproducibility. We definitely need to um, generate workflows for attribution so we can connect all this data our researchers are generating uh, to grant credit and to help all our funding agencies to provide support to the most important and most reliable research. So what we do at DataSide is we develop and we support systems to locate, identify, and cite data. Our mission is to support easy access, to foster acceptance, and to help our researchers reusing data. Because, first of all, we need services, but then we need to help our researchers understanding and taking the best of these of this services. Um, so DataSide is not a small organization. We are a non-profit that is present all around the world. We have almost 40 members, and I'm running out of space in this slide to, to add them all, and we are, we are growing very fast. So if we check the numbers, uh, DataSide was created in 2009, and since then we've grown 35 members, until the 40 we're now. We have more than 720 data centers uh, producing, sharing, and assigning DOIs for data with us. And in this um, seven years, we've minted almost 8 million DOIs. And um, I was checking the resolutions for last month, and we had around 8 million resolutions last month. So this means that it's, it's not a matter of uh, building services and letting them lay there, but our researchers are actually making use of them. So where are we with data publication? Because it's not only about data side. There are many organizations uh, doing a lot of things uh, lately. I guess the, the first stop is always funders. Um, lately, most of the, of the funders both in the US and Canada and in Europe, have been developing not only open access, but open data policies. And this information is extracted from the Sherpa Juliet um, stats, where we can see that already one fourth of them are requiring data, data archiving, and they have strict policies about it. There are lots of them that started encouraging them, but there's still a lot where there's no detailed requirement about data archiving, which is not something 
about not requiring it, but still not making a huge effort to develop this kind of policies. So if we check um, a couple of examples, I've taken here NSF and the European Union for the Horizon 2020 program. And the NSF is already highlighting how primary data, samples, and collections are expected to be shared by the researchers at a reasonable time, meaning the sooner the better. And NSF has already started mentioning software as one of these key data sets. So it's still not mandatory, it's still not strictly required, but it's already encouraged to publish, share, and reuse uh, software. If we consider what the European Union is saying, um, all scientific publications publicly funded must be freely available. And this is what supports the optimal reuse of research data. So scientific research is supported by open data as a key instrument to make it discoverable, accessible, and usable beyond what the original purpose of the research is. And for the European Union, those are the key points to make data available. Um, so once you have your funders require data publication and data reuse, of course you start developing lots of services to support these mandates. Um, data repositories are the main stakeholder supporting data publication. So we have lots of organizations, and I'm talking about universities, about national agencies, but also about uh, disciplinary and content specific um, efforts that are developing multiple data repositories for, for the community. So if we check Re3Data, which is the research registry of, uh, of research um, repositories, we see that we have already 1,500 repositories available, uh, making a clear effort to be part of this, of this list and supporting the community. So this is not um, a big, uh, this is not a small list of organizations, but it's actually a huge amount of uh, research repositories running and growing every day. Um, if we take the publisher's perspective, Data journals are one of the most important actions taken in the last few years. Um, so data journals were not really common in the past, but they have been growing a lot in the last few years. And I'm taking this graph from the data journal survey that was run in 2015, where if we compare these hun around 120 data, data journals with the five to 10 that were existing like 10, 15 years ago, we can see that this is, this is growing incredibly fast. So of course, this is my personal opinion, but um, it's true that um, data journals are, are trying to adapt data publication to the traditional model. But still, this is already something that is um, supporting and uh, helping the adoption of data publication. Firstly, because they are already contributing to the better documented um, data sets, so it's not a matter of like submitting them to a random repository and forgetting about them. All these, all these data journals are requiring clear and explicit um, descriptions of how to use and how to reuse these data sets. Um, they are already including elements of peer review because you wouldn't be publishing this data journal if someone wouldn't be checking if this is reproducible and reusable. And of course, they are promoting all these ideas among the community. Um, so once we have all these infrastructures, once we have um, all our funders supporting the process, once we have repositories and publishers um, building services for our researchers, now is the moment to make sure that all this research is already checked, followed, and understood clearly. Uh, one of the things that is missing definitely is um, a, a bigger effort on data metrics, because tracking impact is definitely hard uh, when it comes to data. Uh, what we have been doing for publications, counting citations, is not that easy to transfer to data publication. 
because data reuse may mean different things. You may be reusing a data set, you may be modifying a piece of software and adapting it to your research, um, you may be extending or putting things together to build something new. So when you're citing data, you may be doing many things with it. And we're definitely not modeling this kind of reuse yet. Um, so there are, many, there are many projects trying to support data metrics lately. Uh, making data count is one of them, uh, where, where they run a lot of surveys and interviews with researchers to understand what's, uh, what's impact for them when it comes to data. Um, is impact uh, having other papers citing you, or is impact checking that there are, there are lots of downloads for your data sets? Because um, as data citation is still not a standard, many times the other indicators may be particularly important. And if we think about software, this, uh, this goes one step further because uh, all the workflows already very well established by platforms like GitHub um, allow many other ways to reuse software, like creating forks, modifying them, or submitting requests to integrate um, upstream any changes. So where are we heading to with all these changes, with all these actions? Um, I think our main goal was, is a fully connected research where it's not only about papers, and it's not only about data sets, but we're putting together and we're connecting together authors, publications, data, the funding information, the institutions they're working for, and how research is evolving through time. Um, and it also, it, also, it also means that we're trying to understand what compliance means for all these funders, and we're trying to understand what long preservation when it comes to huge pieces of data uh, means. But definitely this fully connected research uh, is uh, pretty far from what we, we definitely understand as something reasonable right now because we will all, all like to live in this uh, world full of rainbows and unicorns where everything works perfectly, but this is definitely not the truth right now. And there's a lot to do to get there. So then what's missing? What should we, <coughs> what should we do to get there? Well, we have many active fronts. Uh, we need to work a lot on the technical infrastructure, and I guess that's one of the things we've been doing the most. We've been building lots of reliable services, and we've been developing the, the underlying infrastructure, for example, what we have been doing at DataSide with the UIs. Um, and we already have lots of support services. Um, and metrics and metrics are, are a very nice example of these support services built on top of the um, infrastructure <coughs> we already have. But integrating all these services, integrating data publication workflows with the, um, the funding workflows and the metrics and the importance of, of, of um, reuse and, and impact tracking are definitely important for our, for our funders. But there's one final step that I consider particularly important, and it's training. Because we build a lot of infrastructure, we develop services, we talk to our funders, we connect our services, and we get everything done. But if we don't go, and we talk to our researchers, and we make them understand how this is important, how this is supporting their research, how this will start being evaluated very soon, uh, we're not getting there. We have a lot of infrastructure no one's using. So what's DataSide doing about all this? Uh, well, our way to confront these this boundaries is to make our organization evolve. So as I was saying before, we've been a nonprofit organization since 2009, and we did, what we did this year is we modified our membership model to accept all sorts of organizations. So we're not uh, anymore this uh, national agency, only nonprofit organization. We're supporting all sorts of members to make sure that DOIs and this technical infrastructure arrives to all sorts of, of, um, of organizations. And we're, we're trying to make sure that all the community feedback that we receive regarding our services is definitely integrated and it makes a real impact. One of, the, one of these examples would be uh, our metadata schema that we'll be launching after the summer where we will be including quite a few new things. And for example, one of them is funder information and funding information. Because um, once you're retrieving metadata about your, your data sets, of course, one of the things you would like to do uh, is to understand who has been funding this and how 
all this uh, this money you've been putting into research into research is um, is creating a, an actual impact. Um, one of the other things we've been doing is supporting data metrics uh, and um, and even data tracking. We've been working with Crossref, which is our one well, one of our main colleagues when when it comes to to DOIs and to research uh, infrastructure um, to track connections between traditional publications and data sets. So we start understanding how data is reused from papers that have been published and how the connections work the other way around. So if you're publishing your data, is there any way you can um, create references to go back to the publications that help you develop these, developing these data sets? And finally, as I was saying before, one of the things where we're putting most of our efforts is training and support. We're part of this EU-funded project called Thor, where we're pre preparing a lot of support information, training, events, and uh, general support documentation so our researchers, our integrators and developers, librarians, and also our funders understand what are the options, how they can help their, their final researchers, and how they could help us in this process of making data publication something real. And that's it. Great, do we have any questions for Laura? Okay, I actually have um, one uh, follow-up on Thor. Yep. Um, I, I think that's a very interesting project, and I wonder if you could talk a little bit about, um, you talked about libraries and how they would work, but mm -hmm. publishers obviously have a, a real and direct uh, contact point with authors and, and helping authors provide data for us. Mm -hmm. um, are you working or looking to work with publishers to yeah. improve that, that experience? Are you working to support publishers as they work with authors to mm -hmm. provide data? So what we did when we organized the, the Thor team is we tried to, to integrate the, the publisher's perspective, and we have two publishers working with us. One is PLOS, and the other one is Elsevier through Elsevier Labs. And what they are doing is they are integrating through their submission systems uh, persistent identifiers both for data and for authors. So when you're submitting a paper to a set of journal, you can start attaching and getting DOIs for, for your data sets, the ones that, are, that have some sort of relation to this, to this paper, and you can connect all these publications back to your ORCID, uh, your ORCID record. So you're putting together all this information. Great. Are there any other questions, or am I going to hog the, the question mic for the moment? All right, I only have one more. Um, so you say that data, um, one of the things that you are working for at CERN is or, or sees that data publication is being molded into the traditional publishing model. Mm -hmm. What do you see as some of the challenges or um, let's say less than optimal solutions for that? I mean, that rightly, for example, prevents you from data maturing, data forking, things being incorporated into data upstream, things mm -hmm. along those lines. Um, what are some of the issues um, yeah, there? you see, when when we talk about traditional publications, you would have a team that have been working on a project, and they will end up writing a paper more or less all together. Someone will be writing, someone will be reviewing, but they all have been part of this project. But when we talk about data publication, uh, we talk about, or in general, we talk about relatively big teams where someone has been writing the software, someone has been taking data, someone has been processing it. So the authorship model for, for data publication is pretty far from what we have been doing with the, with the traditional publications. There are lots of roles, and we might want to consider um, assigning different different connections between all these data sets and their authors, for example. Um, And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the other the other point would be would be metrics uh, because the traditional metrics, citation metrics, like how many people citing me, or if, is this paper important by the number of citations it received, um, is difficult. And as I was saying for for data, because when you upload your data site to a repository, um, or when you're uploading your software to GitHub, someone might be checking it. Um, reusing it, re-uploading it, and not connecting it back to your to your original to your original data set. 
Um, so licenses for data and licenses for software are also taking a big role if you're assigning like a full free license where there's no need to, to attribute um, this, new, this new modified uh, piece of software to the original one, then you're losing a lot of connections there. Okay, great. Any other questions? Well, wonderful, thank you, Laura. <laughs>